Hello everyone, welcome back to the Metachlorian Media Podcast. Uh, it's me, Nate Padilla, and... Ah, uh, hi, this is Corey. This is Corey Osborne. And you know the funny thing, though? This was actually supposed to be Metachlorian Mania. Oh, but I you sh- know the funny thing is, I'm like, you know, media sounds better, so <laughs> I'll just go with it. Metachlorian Mania! Anyways, yeah, so... Yeah. Um, before we get started, I just want to say, if you haven't already, go like our Facebook page, subscribe to us, and give this video a thumbs up if you like what you hear today. Now, let's get started. So the first thing we wanted to talk about today was they announced that Star Wars Episode Nine it's is going to be, be in May. It's going to be back yep. in May. Like, back in May. Corey, how do you feel about this? I feel a mixed emotion. Because, first of all, I really enjoyed kind of looking up to Star Wars in December yeah. because it was like, it's almost like a little Christmas because I is. don't care about Christmas anymore. I'm old. <laughs> <laughs> I don't get any presents. My nieces and nephews get presents. I, my parents just throw money at me, which is okay. Which I like, yeah. I, like Mama and Papa Osborne, please still do that. <laughs> but no, yeah, I uh, really enjoy, I really enjoy the tradition of it. That's yeah. what I like about it. Like I really enjoy how it's going to be like it used to be, which is good because I specifically remember with the prequels, my dad and my best friend's dad taking us to see Star Wars in May. And now we're going to be able to do that yeah. with episode nine and different stuff like that, which is cool. And it's, but it's still kind of, it's still kind of sad having that whole like Christmas kind of feel to it and different stuff like that. So that's a little bit, yeah, and that's a little bit I of feel shame. the what exact. Do you think? I I pretty much feel the exact same way. Um, I never saw like the prequels in theaters except for episode three. Okay. In May, but um, no, I like loved that it came out in December just because like I love Christmas too. Mm-hmm. So it was like my two like favorite things like coming together. Yeah, exactly. And exactly. just like it was just so much cool. And I told my, I told like my my parents and like some of my other friends and so I'm like. I'm like, if Star Wars is going to be, like, a December thing now, I'll never be in the Christmas spirit ever again. <laughs> You're just going to be in the <laughs> Star Wars Because, like, spirit. November will hit and the Christmas decoration will come up. I'm like, ooh, that means probably new Star Wars products. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's exactly how it was for me. Like, whether it was The Force Awakens or Rogue One, basically that's what I was excited for. I yeah. was like, Christmas? Nah. Yeah. <laughs> nah, Christmas can wait. And then like, another thing um, was I was on YouTube one day, and I saw, like, like the best Star Wars like Christmas like commercials and they mm-hmm. were all from like twenty fifteen. And like just the way they use like Christmas and Star Wars together, they made such great commercials. No, and it's a perfect marketing it machine. Is. So which is one thing that I need to get into. It's like I don't I don't know if it's necessarily lucratively the best decision. Yeah. Because you see you have the perfect time to market stuff for toys. Yeah. And you have the perfect time to be like, hey, there's nothing coming out in the month after this movie comes out. Yeah. So the thing is, they had all of January and February to just destroy the box office. Yeah. So I'm kind of questioning Disney right now with what they're like. I understand traditionally what they're doing, but I don't understand what they're doing fiscally. Yeah. So it's kind of like, I don't know what's up with that. I mean, to me, like... And, like, here's the thing. No matter what month Star Wars comes out on, still gonna it's going to destroy it's gonna anything. It's still murder it's all gonna of its... Destroy. It's going to murder Avatar. It's going to murder Beauty and the Beast. <laughs> <laughs> what? Are they doing a Beauty and the Beast sequel? I... They probably they, they are. No, they're so gre- they're greedy. They have done a Beauty and the Beast sequel. I thought it was, like, a prequel when they're like, Oh, it's Christmas time, and yeah. we're doing this. Yeah. Beauty and the Beast 3. No, I mean negative three. Okay, anyways, I, <laughs> but, I'm done. <laughs> but no, I, yeah, the only really good thing is really, I guess, that um, we don't have to wait as long. Okay. You know, it's like, okay, now we only have to wait five months for 2019 instead of 12. Because I remember um, last December, or no, when it came, when it became January, I was just like, we're so close, but yet still far away from episode eight. Yeah, it was exactly. Just like, it was like December was last month, but we had to wait till next December for episode eight. So exactly, because it's like, yeah, it's practically like a year. Yeah, all that jazz. Yeah, well, not practically it is. But, but yeah, I'd much rather have Star Wars back in December than May. Like I said, I know it's like traditional for Star Wars to be in May, but it's just I think marketing wise and you know families are together, so they go out and see the new Star Wars movie. Exactly. Exactly. So that was one of the best things about, uh, well, I could say this about The Force Awakens, not necessarily Rogue One, 
specifically with my like family. But I remember I saw um, The Force Awakens like twice with my family. Yeah. Over <laughs> and it was fun. It was yeah. really cool. And another great memory I have was when we went to the midnight release, the premiere uh, episode seven. Yeah. We had a friend who's in town for Christmas that we haven't seen in like a year or so. Mm-hmm. So it was cool to hang out with him and go do that. And then also my dad took us on Christmas Eve, and that was just kind of cool to be like Force Awakens and Christmas Eve on the same day, and just that's it was, that's dude, that's lit. Yeah, and so Sorry now for interrupting you. Yeah, no, you're fine. I'm just, but, I'm just a rude person. No, you're fine. <laughs> <laughs> okay, All what right. what would you like, or what are we talking about next year? Uh, we have something that's that's been riddling the minds of many Star Wars fans. It's been causing people, it's been causing rifts. People have been going this side. The people are Team J.J. Abrams. People are Team Ryan Johnson. Personally, I'm Team Ryan Johnson on this one. But you all know it. You love it. It's Scargate. Scargate SG-1, mother. <laughs> no, yeah. So, just in case y'all didn't know, uh, they're at the end of Force Awakens. Spoilers. Um, Ray wins the lightsaber duel against Kylo Ren and lobs his face with the lightsaber and causes a really awkward scar. And I actually had this thought too, which makes me like feel like I have some artistic integrity. Sorry about some of the sound here. It's raining right now. Yeah. But anyways, um, an awkward scar just goes across Kylo Ren's face and our lovely national treasure of a human being, Ryan Johnson, decided to change that. He decided to be like, yo, this scar is really freaking awkward. So I'm going to shift it a little bit. So in the trailer, everybody noticed that. So now there's Scargate. People are like, hey, well, what's canon then? Which scar is the one that's supposed to be there? I love Star Wars fans. They just make such a big what thing. What scar is canon? <laughs> yeah, what scar is canon? That's people what I really say that? <laughs> no, that is what people... Oh they're God. like, so is it like J.J. Abrams or is it Ryan John... No, people are getting... You, Nate, you didn't know people are getting this. No, this. I knew people were like, com- like confused and stuff about the scars. I didn't know people were saying like... Which scar is canon? Yeah, no, they're getting like way... Like, like the Rey and Kylo battle happened, except for that one little part. That, exactly. That, that didn't happen. No, it's funny. I just want to see J.J. Abrams and Ryan Johnson just duke it out. My <laughs> scar! My scar! <laughs> see, this is one of the things in Star Wars where I just don't care about. It's not going to make me not go see the movie. Um, I see. Personally, personally, I don't like that he changed his scar. I know I'm in the mi- minority opinion there. Personally, I don't like that you change the scar just because, like, it's just, like, it's just going to be weird for me for people who watch Star Wars for the first time and see, like, his scar going from, like, his left side or whatever, right side, Mm -hmm. to his, you know, opposite side. And then in the next movie, it's, like, completely different. People are like, what the heck? And the only way to explain it is, like, oh, yeah, the director didn't like it, so he changed it. Like, that's really the only thing. I understand, and I do think that maybe JJ and Ryan and uh, Ryan should have talked about it a little bit more. Yeah. Like, because Ryan was already pegged to direct episode eight at that point, probably when they were filming that scene. I was guessing. Yeah. You know, so I'm thinking they probably could have talked about it because Ryan got the script of episode seven. Ryan worked off of the script and what he would yeah. put in episode eight afterwards. So it's kind of like a thing where I feel like communi- more communication should have happened. And I think J.J. was probably a chill enough dude to be like, oh, okay, well, you don't like the scar. That's fine. We can yeah. probably find a compromise. Because personally, I think the scar isn't ugly enough than, with how it is right now. Yeah. I think it needs to be more of a big gash. Yeah. But at the same time, I like the direction of the scar more. Yeah. I love how we're talking about this. I think it's, so, <laughs> I think it's absolutely hysterical. It's definitely, at least, like, <laughs> at least Kylo Ren can definitely, like represent his grandfather now yeah with anakin star in episode three <laughs> yeah classic i yeah. love how like nice the scar looks the fight it being like a huge yeah. lightsaber thing like bzz, yeah it's like this little nice it went from this like, huge gash to like this really nice thin like i over the eye what i think would be kind of cool is if like his eye was actually like rendered useless or something, and it yeah. was like kind of like whited. Cool. It was like whited over or something like that, and it looked almost like translucent or different yeah. things like that. I think that'd be cool. That'd be cool. But eh, I digress. I don't work for Lucasfilm, but if anybody from Lucasfilm is listening, I would love to. <laughs> Anyways, which they're not. <laughs> but, I put in an app. I uh, you know, I dude, I so would. I'm like, do do you have any qualifications? No. <laughs> or do I have any qualifications? No. But do I love Star Wars? 
Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Should that be enough? Sure. <laughs> okay, let's see what's up. So, what's coming okay, up here? Okay, so sticking with uh, Kylo Ren a little bit, I have a theory of who Ray's parents are. Ooh, this is not. This? Okay, so what's I. What's this theory? I basically made Sir this, Nate. <laughs> I basically uh, made up this theory myself. Okay. Um, I didn't get an idea from a YouTube video or anything. This is just how I think a really cool direction they could take it. People are saying, you know, there's the, is Rey a Skywalker? Is she a Kenobi? Some people think she could be both. I have a theory that, and a lot of people think this too, that she's a brand new character, but her parents, this is what I think. I think it's very possible that her parents were actually both Jedis that survived Order 66. And after Order 66 happens, and they're like, okay, well, the Jedi are kind of no more. Let's hook up, have a kid, or something. Probably. And they Naturally, had Rey. Naturally, if you have two people together who are yeah. the opposite sex, or the same sex, you know, whatever. Whatever they, when whatever mom, their preference when is. When mommy and daddy meet. Anyways. So, <laughs> so, um, so I think that she was born from two Jedi parents, and they're like, oh, cool, we have a daughter now. But then they both sense the dark side in her, and they're like, oh, crap. We don't know how to handle this. What should we do? And they were just kind of douchebags and like, let's leave her on Jakku and tell her we're coming back, but actually not come back. Cause... They didn't even tell her. Yeah, <laughs> they're just I, like, I, bye, Felicia. Yeah. <laughs> bye, Raylicia. <laughs> Catch you later. But... Hasta la pasta. <laughs> no, that's yeah, that's but, exactly, yeah. <laughs> but that's my theory that her parents just kind of like ditched her because maybe they felt the dark side in her and didn't know how to handle it. So they kind of just like abandoned her and be like, let's just pretend she never happened or whatever. You know, that seems like a viable theory. Like, because I'm under the, um, I'm under the thought that I don't really think that Rey is a Skywalker or a Kenobi as well, because the evidence is really thin at this yeah. point, guys. You gotta think about Every it. Theory... They joked about it during the panel at yeah. Celebration, so why would they joke about something that's in the, that's a major spoiler in episode right. eight, you know? And to me, it's also like, every theory I've heard makes sense. Mm -hmm. So it's like, it could be like anything, but that's what, because like all the Jedi, not all the Jedi um, died in Order 66. That is very true. So it's very possible that like, there was this boy Jedi, girl Jedi, and it's like, hey, when a boy what? Jedi meets a girl <laughs> Jedi, they like to get the Jedi stuff on and on and on. Okay, sorry. I need to not, I need to stop singing. My goodness. But, <laughs> but that's my theory of it of who ray could possibly be okay well okay let's see let me poke holes in your theory <laughs> um let's see um like the thing is you can't, I can't really poke any holes in it because it's very viable like the thing is you never know because that's how they like that's how they do things now they yeah. just like go well you didn't know about this yeah <laughs> like for instance with rebels with uh kane and jarrus they were just like Oh yeah, Kanan was a Padawan who happened to survive. Yeah. And then he stopped being a Jedi, which is a thing, a very, like, a real thing that people could do, because obviously being a Jedi was super illegal at that point. Yeah. So, of course they're not going to be Jedis. So there could be two, uh, you know, classically attractive people who happened to be Jedi and gave birth to Rey. And, yeah, but one thing that I need to wonder, though, with that theory is, like, where are they now? What have they been doing for the past, like, what, Ray's 19, 20, something around there, 22? Yeah. Um, I haven't thought about that, so I'm glad you asked that. I... Poor theory-making, <laughs> mate. My goodness. So I really, you know, probably, I would assume they did pull an Obi-Wan as well and just kind of went in hiding somewhere, or maybe they are on Jakku watching over Ray, and they just didn't tell her, like, hey, we're back. You know, they just kind of showed up, like, later, and we're like, okay, we're going to watch her from a distance, and if yeah. something happens, something happens, we're not going to do anything about it, because we don't want to be associated with her yeah, yeah. anymore, because we feel this dark presence in her, and we don't know how to handle it. Guess who's back? Race parents. <laughs> okay, but no, it's, um, yeah, that's, that's interesting, but I honestly, another thing that, like, I think about with that theory is, although it's, like, believable... Will it, like, quench the thirst of the Star Wars fans? Do you think it will? Um, like, if, like what do you mean? Like, what? I get to a thing where it's like, if the story is riveting enough, and if you, like, ha if you, like, meet these people and you're like, wow, that's incredible, 
and different stuff like that. Like these people, like this story is like it really depends on how they implement the idea. But if they're just two Yahoo Jedi's, yeah, it's like it really depends on how they do it because they have to be extremely like meticulous about it. And also, I'm not so sure whether your theory is correct because um, Daisy Ridley, even though she could be trying to misdirect here. She's saying, like, whoa, well, I thought it was obvious with The Force Awakens yeah, who um, that's true. her parents was. That either. And the thing is, it, there's no way it, it could be obvious if we don't know who the characters yeah, are. True, you that's know? very true. So it's kind of like... And that's, like, another thing. Even though, like, even though another thing is, uh, at the same time, that's, that's a statement that enforces your theory as well, if you think about it, because it can be obvious because... Um, I'm trying to get my train of thought here. Like it's obvious that like it's she's ob- no one. She's, she's no new. one because that's what because that's what um, Maz Kanata was saying. She was yeah. like, "Your belonging isn't behind you; it's ahead." Yeah, and different stuff like that. So yeah, yeah. So I don't yeah. know. I'm. I just hope that whoever Ray's parents are, that it just brings shock and satisfaction to majority of the Star Wars fans because let's face it you can't make everyone happy mm-hmm. but I hope it just brings just like shock and holy crap I didn't see that coming mm-hmm. to everyone and I really have faith in Lucasfilm and Disney that they're gonna do that I do too and part of the reason why I have a lot of faith is because of Ryan Johnson because like I think the guy is a masterful director and I think he's an excellent writer too with the exception of some, like, weird time travel stuff that he did on Looper that kind of annoyed me, he is an excellent writer, and I have a feeling that he has a really nice treat set up for us in December. Yeah. And I can't wait, and I don't, and the worst thing is, is, you know, I live, or we live in a place that is really annoying during the winter, mm-hmm. but I find myself, can't, I, I literally can't wait for winter. Yeah. Because of everything <laughs> that's going on right now. And stuff like that. Yeah. So, yeah. I'd definitely be dressing up for the premiere at this time. Yeah. Dude, Even what, though, are, what are you going to dress up as? I'm actually going to buy a Jedi tunic soon. So, I'm good. So, for Comic-Con and stuff like that. Yeah. So, but then again, so we live where it's freezing. Yeah. In the winter. Like. It's like the Midwest, so it's yeah. like New Antarctica. I guess. Yeah. So, <laughs> wearing a thin Jedi robe to a... Star Wars premiere is going to be quite cold, but... Yeah. Tap, tap, bit nippy. Hello. <laughs> but yeah. anyways, that's just my theory of Rey. Uh-huh. Like I said, hopefully we'll have something great, you know? Yeah. And one thing I thought about, too, is just like, I still don't know, and I know we kind of talked about this on the last episode about watching trailers and theory videos, but it's just like, why do people want to know so much about this movie before seeing it? Yeah, like, it's... Like, what if you want to, like, get it spoiled before to go see it? That's no fun. Because I feel like I got a lot of stuff spoiled for me for The Force Awakens just because yeah. of how much I wanted to see it. And the thing that did it for me, that made me decide to never, like, look as hard as I looked before, was I saw a toy w- online with Ray with a lightsaber. And yeah. I was like, well, oh, shoot. Yeah. Like, seriously, like, why did I even subject myself to that? I know what's going to happen at the end of the movie now. Yeah. Like, it's, it just, like, it made me really bummed out, you know? So, that was what, like, lesson learned, different stuff like that. So right. It's, because, like, I have nothing but love for those websites, like, making Star Wars or Star Wars Newsnet. They do a lot of good stuff, and we get news from them as well. Right. And that's how, like, that's what I was scrolling through when I was... Um, writing up show notes and different stuff like that, but at the same time, those sites go above and beyond. So I have yeah. to be careful on what I look at and don't look at because there are things I look at and I go mm, not pressing into <laughs> that because there's a particular story about like um, there's a particular story about a certain necklace that Luke is wearing that's going around. And Nate, you can look this up later if you want to like look more All into right. it. But I think in particular that it's a little spoilery if it's true. So I didn't even want to look yeah. into it. So it's kind of like, yeah. So speaking of The Last Jedi, uh, something that also, besides Kylo Ren Scar, that's bringing a lot of topic and talk to is in The Last Jedi trailer when they show Rey training, we're assuming she's training. Yeah. Unless she's really just playing with a lightsaber by herself. But... um. There's a rock 
on top of the island that people were say look like Yoda. And a lot of people are convinced that it's a statue of someone or it's Yoda as a, in statue format. It's a boulder. I think it's just a rock. And it's this, a boulder. <laughs> and if, like, you want to, like, if you want to, like, stroke the theory or whatever, it could be Yoda, but then they replaced it with a rock and post, and they're going to, like, put it at, yeah. at Yoda in a theatrical cut of it. It could be. Because Yoda's going to be in Star Wars Episode Eight, It has to happen. Yeah. Like, Force Ghosts are going to be a thing, and we're going to be all like, yee! And different stuff I still, like that. I so, still feel like Hayden yeah. Christensen could pop up in Episode Eight or Nine somewhere. Mainly because he went to Celebration. But that, yeah, I, I think that, that was like his, what, second time he ever went? Yeah, probably. First. Something like that. So, I definitely think maybe he's like slowly trying to get back into it. Try to win re-win us over mm -hmm. and maybe just pop up and maybe give like Kylo Ren words of wisdom or something like that yeah well Kylo Ren words of wisdom <laughs> you have to hate sand <laughs> I hate you remember if Ray has the high ground don't go don't for don't go for it <laughs> don't go for it don't go for it turn the other cheek <laughs> Remember, always have the high ground, Ben. <laughs> but, um, but that, I really just, it's a rock. Like, this is a perfect example of Star Wars fans taking one thing and chopping it into a billion pieces. I love Star Wars fans. I am a Star Wars fan. I am a part of the fandom, very much so. But we just think about the littlest things. First of all, the littlest things get us triggered, and yeah. <laughs> the littlest things will be what we look at, and we're like, ah, this is a, the, for sure, this is yeah. what Lucasfilm is trying to show us, and I'm like, Yoda is, if Yoda and Obi-Wan or Anakin are in this film and force, force ghost form, Yoda, or, sorry, I'm mixed up with my words, Lucasfilm is not going to put them in any of the marketing, because yeah. that is a major spoiler, yeah. and they know it, so they're not going to do that. And I just, Goodness. okay, so I just thought of this just now when you said Force Ghost, because I didn't think about this. If Obi-Wan shows up as a Force Ghost, do you think, obviously they'll get Ewan McGregor, mm -hmm. but do you think they'll make him look like Alec Guinness from Episode 4, the old version of Obi-Wan? Like, oh, do, yeah, they have to. They like, probably, they'd probably, like, paint his hair, or probably, like, dye his beard white, right. dye his hair white, and he would be, like, that wretched, um, uh, wretched hive of villainy, and different yeah. things like that. So, sorry, my Obi-Wan uh, impersonation is a little rusty. Yeah. My Sabuba is on point, though. <laughs> <laughs> because, like, you know, also with Hayden Christensen being in episode 6 now. Yeah. And he's, like, the young version. Hopefully they won't do that for, if Obi-Wan shows up, they won't have young Obi-Wan as a Force ghost. Because that, that would just be weird. That's just such a stupid thing. Like, I'm, let's, let's get, like... Hate, why was hating Chris? I feel like George Lucas was like, oh, 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 only... let's, oh let's have hating. <laughs> hey, who do the people hate? Hating Christensen. More like hating Christensen. Oh. Star Wars is for kids. <laughs> yeah, Star Wars is for kids. <laughs> but, the, you know, the only reason that would make sense or it's kind of cool or whatever is if you actually have a Star Wars marathon and you watch one through six or one through seven. And then he shows up at the end. Because at least it's like a recognizable face almost. Yeah. But other than that, yeah, it's just like stupid. Yeah, I get that. It's still just kind of like meh. Yeah. Meh. And also, speaking of, uh, you know, theories that happened mm -hmm. in The Force Awakens, or The Last Jedi, and... Okay, the segue is going to be awful. Just bear can, with it. I can cut it. Well, no, it's okay. You don't have to cut it. It's kind of funny how like much I'm biffing it right now. No, I'm just going to chat about two things with Battlefront right now. Going a little out of order. Okay. But That's fine. two things with Battlefront right now. First off, Ray and Kylo have new looks. Yeah. We went in a little bit in the Kylo's look. But what do you think of Ray's new look? She has a little bit more Jedi garb now, a little I, bit of the dark brown. I said her hair's it once. Down. I've said it once, and I'll say it again. Ray is Bay. Ray she is, is so Bay. She looks with great. the hair down. Daisy mm. really looks great mm. in anything. Mm. 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 Like no, she is but for she's if, beautiful. If Daisy Very Ridley beautiful. is listening to us, please marry You me. are a beautiful girl. Please marry like, me. Don't think of us as creeps. We're not like too. We're oh. not like we're not like the like 
those nerds who are like live in their parents' basements, eat Cheetos all day, and you know play weird video games. We're like social. That's exactly <laughs> who I am. I live in my parents' basement and I eat Cheetos all the time. No, <laughs> I, I actually am not that big of a Cheetos fan. Like, really, no. Oh. Like, Cheetos are okay. Flamin' Hot Cheetos are pretty good, though. Mm. But anyway. Anyways. <laughs> no, yeah. Like, <laughs> I, just have a, I just have a ridiculous crush on Daisley Ridley. Can't deny it. And I won't deny it because I am true to myself. And my goodness, it's just, yeah. But no, she... But she looks amazing in, she looks amazing in the new outfit. And she her new, does. And the costume design is excellent. Yeah, she definitely her looks... Her hair, everything looks great. She definitely looks more Jedi now. Exactly. Than she did exactly. in The Force Awakens, obviously. But yeah, she got that Jedi tunic robe thing going on, but it's not like a traditional Jedi mm-hmm. costume. But no, I'm excited to see it like... I know they probably won't... Because they never did this with Princess Leia or Padme. But I kind of like would like to see her like... I don't know how the phrase is like, get that costume, you know? Yeah. If she's just going to be like, because I know Luke's not going to like, going to be like, okay, I'll train you. But first you had to wear the uniform, you know? Like, <laughs> that's like, not going to happen. Here's these robes, fam. <laughs> like, I know that's not going to happen. I have but a just feeling. Or, to see that transition of going from like her, you know, rags that she's been wearing probably for years to like this new mm-hmm. outfit and make her go like, what if I pull this pony three ponytail out? See what happens. <laughs> this three bun thing going on. See yeah, what happens Yeah, it's here. like the evolution of buns. It's like, <laughs> there's like a meme and it has like a picture of like Padme with one and then Princess Leia with, with two and, and then, then Rey with three, three of them. <laughs> that means Rose is going to have four. <laughs> yes! Women in Star Wars. They're described or by Or what their... if like Fat Captain Phasma takes off her helmet and... Oh, oh wow. wow. Lightning. Y'all hear that? Ooh, but anyway, it's like Fat Captain Phasma takes off her helmet and she has like four buns. <laughs> it's like, suck on that. I got four buns. And then Rose these. pops in and she has five. We're like, oh, no, they beat me. But yeah. anyways, um, yeah, Ray looks great. Kylo Ren basically looks the same. Mm-hmm. It's just it looks like he has more of like a cape now than like yeah. just like... Um, it looked like from a, It looked like in episode seven, like... Because um, I did a Kylo Ren cosplay, so I kind of know how the costume... I kind of really good the, Kylo Ren pop costume. Thank you. By the way. That's good. Um, I kind of like studied the costume. It looks like there's a cape coming down from his head, the headpiece. Yeah. And it's just kind of like extra fabric. But this mm-hmm. one, um, from the picture, it looks like he it's like an actual cape that he's wearing, and not just like extra fabric that's like hanging off him. I feel. I feel. But I yeah, he looks he looks the same. He might have a little bit like with the angle of the artwork, it's like. You can't really tell exactly how um, what is new with Kylo's look, so it could look a little bit different. But one thing that I was wondering, do you think this is going to end up being the same thing with the last movie, to where they reveal the like new costume at the end of the film? Do you think it's going to be one of those things, or do you think Rey's actually going to get it? I start, um, I think she'll get it somewhat in the middle. Cause of it, how long is the training sequence on Oct two then? True, that's what I'm thinking. Well, like, Luke's was only like what, realistically, like twenty, thirty minutes. And no, it wasn't. It was throughout most of the movie, and then oh, yeah, he that's can, true. He can well, actually, they're at the beginning. They're in Hoth, but that's actually a short amount of time. But most of the movie, he He's is in Dagobah. True. That's true. So um, I'm not sure if she's going to be even wearing that costume for a really long time. You know? Yeah. Yeah, plus she has, you know, that new one, They like you said, in episode 7, when she's actually, before she goes to where Luke is, mm-hmm. she has mm-hmm. that new one. So, I don't know, maybe they will give it at the end, because, I mean, like, referencing the Phantom Menace here, but young Anakin didn't have his Jag tunic to, like, the very end either. Yeah, that is true. Even though he was just a Padawan. What in the Phantom Menace are you doing, mate? <laughs> Re- um, referencing that terrible movie. Okay. I actually kind of like the Phantom. Menace. It's not bad. It's it's no, it's bad. But <laughs> it's it's a bad movie. But I enjoy it for what it is because it is the first Star Wars movie that I remember. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's the first one that I remember watching. And regardless of what you say about the prequels, the st- they they still have their magic. Yeah. They really do. They still have those moments of awe yeah. that are iconic. You know what I mean? They're just not good movies, but they yeah. have good moments. Yeah, another thing about, uh, kind of going back to Battlefront, and you can discuss more about Battlefront here in mm-hmm. a second, 
is um, didn't Kylo Ren's lightsaber get destroyed in Episode Seven? Yeah, it did get destroyed, the... but they're ma- they have a new one. He has a new cross guard, which I'm okay with. Yeah, I like a cross guard lightsaber. Same. Same. So like, yeah. Do you think he just probably just rebuilt it or just? I'm Probably sure has spares. I'm kidding. <laughs> I have a spare lightsaber. Yeah. I'd have spare lightsabers, but I feel like they're probably a little hard to make, so I doubt that he'd have spares. Yeah. He probably constructed a new one. Or, not thinking about it, since, like, episode 8 is right after episode 7, he must have a spare then. Yeah. <laughs> but he's, like, or, just collects, like, lightsabers. Or he could. This is a. This is getting into theory territory. He could have gone to Mustafar, Invader's mm-hmm. castle. Yeah. He could have found. He could have like gotten a kyber crystal from there or something like yeah. that, and reconstructed the lightsaber. I think that would be a really cool scene. That would be cool. Like him going to Mustafar and just being all like, "I'm evil." Yeah. Oh, random uh, segue theory. Do you think Snoke's base is in Mustafar? Ooh. I didn't think about that. I feel like that'd be cool because they... Because he was a hologram in episode 7. So exactly, so he could be anywhere. Yeah. Yeah. He could. I would say yeah. I don't see why not. Yeah, I think that'd be cool, and I really hope it happens. Because like, they um, had Mustafar in uh, Rogue One, but yeah. they didn't even say it was Mustafar in it. Yeah. Which I thought was really interesting. It just was like... Because yeah. all every other planet was named in which Rogue I hated. One. Except for like... But, I mean, like I didn't like that either, but like kind of just like how... Much they were jumping to planet planet, you almost kind of like needed it in a way. Yeah, I know, and I think it was probably something that they did in po- post production, where they're like, "Hey, this is kind of confusing the people." Yeah, <laughs> ah, I love like all you movie producers should are probably think I'm a jerk because of how my voice for movie <laughs> producers. Ah, they gotta sound like Kermit the Frog, but no, it's kind of. Yeah, it was just one of those things where I felt like they just jumped around too much. Yeah. I felt like, it felt jarring the first time I watched it. But then it was a little easier in the other viewings, because I kind of knew what was going on. Yeah. But you should never feel that way the first time you're watching a film. Yeah. Regardless. Um, with um, Getting back on topic, with Battlefront, we're going to talk about Battlefront real quick. Battlefront 2. Um... Nate, have you played Battle? Do you play the first I, Battlefront? I didn't. Okay, okay, so I went with my brother and one of our friends to get to the midnight release of Battlefront. And oh I yeah, when up, you broke Seth's heart because yeah, of your spoilers. Seth, yeah, spoilers. So, um, so I like watched them play it. I played it with them for about ten minutes, and that's really it. But like, I've always like when we would hang out, they would get on Battlefront and play, and I would just kind of watch and talk with them and stuff. Mm-hmm. So I. So I know, like, the gist of it, but I never actually, like, sat down and played it for like, multiple hours. Nate, I will buy Battlefront 2, and you can come over and we'll I'm play, down. okay? We'll I'm totally down. do it. We'll do it. So the thing, of, the, the thing about Battlefront is it's an okay game. It's okay. But the thing is, there was no single-player campaign. The season pass was about 40 bucks, 30 bucks. I didn't buy it because I didn't want to pay an extra 40 bucks. For a game that I already bought sixty bucks, yeah. that I already spent sixty dollars on, you can go through multiple eras, which is uh, prequel, original, and sequel trilogy, and you also have space battles at the Wazoo when you come out when you buy the game, and Darth Maul is in it, mm-hmm. <laughs> or Darth Maul is not in it. But in Battlefront, you have everything. You have everything that we didn't like about the about the original Battlefront for the next generation is in Battlefront 2. So some people are a little pessimistic and they're like, well, this is reactionary. We can't trust EA or DICE because they're just trying to do this to make a quick buck again. And I understand their sentiment because honestly, Battlefront was a $60 game and it was easily worth 20 of it. So <laughs> you, I understand how... That sentiment is. But you really got to see that these game developers love Star Wars. And I can kind of tell that by some of the behind the scenes videos that they've had. And I know they really were rushing to make that first Battlefront game because they wanted to line it up with the release of The Force Awakens. So I don't think that they're going to do this next time because, yeah, it's releasing before The Last Jedi, but they've been working on it since 2015 yeah they've been like they i feel like they left production on battlefront now they're doing battlefront 2 
And so, and so it's I think they're actually gotten more time behind their belt. So um, you're so you're basically saying you're hopeful that it's gonna be better than Battlefront the first yeah. round. Hmm. And I'm not going to and the thing is, am I going to buy it on premiere night? No. I'm not going to because they already burned me once. I'm not stupid. <laughs> like I'm going to wait and I'm gonna read reviews and I'm going to watch stuff on YouTube on it and see how the game runs and see if it's not like a piece of crap because like game developers nowadays will send out a broken game for some reason, which is ludicrous in my opinion. Yeah. But anyways, this isn't a video game podcast, so I won't <laughs> get into that. But yeah. Um, I'm not going to be naive and I urge anybody who's watch or listening to the podcast to not do that as well, because don't give your money to a product that's not going to help you out. Am I going to buy Battlefront 2? Probably. Probably. Like, but just not I, right away. I just won't buy it right away. Like if it, if they say it is terrible, I will wait until a price cut <laughs> because I have to buy everything Star Wars. It's a, it's kind of a completionist thing for me, you know? So Yeah. That's what I have to say about All that. All right. So, so the last thing we're going to talk about today is um, a very popular theory that a lot of Star Wars fans know about. Some, if you're like even just like a 2%, yeah, I watched the movies once, liked them, not really a huge fan. You kind of heard about this theory before. But it is that Jar Jar Binks is a Sith. Hmm. So, a Sith? A Sith. A Sith. So basically what people are saying is that Jar Jar Binks in episode one uh, showed a lot of signs of having like Jedi powers or Sith powers and that the reason he didn't become a Sith and it didn't happen was because Jar Jar Binks of course was such a fail and people hated him so much yeah. that they kind of scrapped that idea and that's what the theory goes. I honestly believe it. I really do because there's this documentary I believe it's on YouTube and um, it's basically the making of episode set oh, not episode seven, episode one. Mm-hmm. And it's really interesting to see how much, like, work and time and stuff went into episode one and then how, like, it just kind of failed. Yeah. Which I'm sure all movies do that. No, yeah. Every, but, nobody goes into a movie thinking, oh, I'm going to make a steaming pile of bullcrap. Yeah. <laughs> like, you, you mean, know? Like, you nobody was out for the room. Like, <laughs> oh, hi, Mark. Oh, hi. Oh, we have to actually, let's make this a thing. Star Wars meme of the week. This Star Wars meme of the week <laughs> is... If you haven't seen the beautiful movie called uh, The Room, you have to watch it. Yeah. But anyways, it's the like end of The Force Awakens, and instead of Rey, it's Tommy Wiseau going, Oh, oh hi, Mark. Oh, hi, Mark. I, what I, you been up to? What you been, what's new with you? How's your sex life? Okay, you guys, no. You, if you haven't seen The Room, you won't understand those references. But what, look, church it, like, look it up. Uh, the Force Awakens... The Room or something yeah. like that on YouTube. And if, you haven't, hysterical. and if you haven't seen The Room, go watch The Room. It's everywhere online illegally. Yeah, so... <laughs> but don't it, pay to watch The Room. But anyways, on this um, episode, <laughs> don't pay to watch The Room. <laughs> it's, it's crap. It's an awful movie. Don't pay to watch it. <laughs> Unless it's like at a special screen. But yes. Oh yes, definitely. If it's like a special, like Event. at any Almo Draft House or anything like that, check it out. But anyways, so I what I was saying is I believe it because in this documentary... There's a very short like period when they're talking about Jar Jar, and George Lucas says Jar Jar is the key to all this. We have to make him work. Yeah, that and it's is like, true. It's like ooh, like why does he have to work if he's the comic release character? Yeah, why does he have to work? You know, besides the obvious reason. But no, yeah, because I've actually seen that because it is in the bonus features of uh, um, the Phantom Menace. Yeah, because that's a yeah. He does, yeah, that is interesting how he uses that kind of wording. You're like, he has to work. Star Wars yeah. is for kids. <laughs> Anyways, no. <laughs> George Lucas ends all the sentences like that. <laughs> <laughs> I hate the Force Awakens. Star Wars is for kids. <laughs> no, dude. Yeah, I, and the thing is, this theory is interesting because he does jump very high, higher than most other Gungans. Yeah. And he has this kung fu style that's called like drunken fist yeah i believe i if i'm like butchering it i'm sorry but and it does make a lot of sense that he and he like almost bumbles into being a proficient fighter which is interesting yeah so but it has some up, credence he ends up taking like 20 guys out in one like scene mm -hmm. just for looking like an idiot but then yeah there is that martial arts whatever it's called drunken where, fist yeah where 
that's the point of it all to make it look like you're not you're not knowing what you're doing. So yeah, I really believe it. I think it would have been really cool. I personally think George should have just like still went with it. Yeah, like, might have made the prequel like worse, George, but yeah. I think like he should have went with it. Maybe would have made people like. But Jar-Jar what would more. Jar? What would happen to Jar? Wouldn't Jar Jar be in the original trilogy then? If he True. was such a powerful Sith Lord, True. that just was like, Misa gonna rule the whole world! <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, like, there's no reference of Darth Plagueis or General Grievous in the original either. That is true. So, or Darth Maul, and he apparently, like, survived in episode one. Yeah. So, have you ever heard of the prodigy of Darth Plagueis the Wise? I have. I've heard the tragedy of Darth Plagueis the Wise. I've seen those Star Wars memes where it was like, they take two lines. It's just like, um, like one of them was like, "Have you heard that tragedy of Darth Plagueis?" And Anakin just goes like, "Yep." And then it's just like written directly by. <laughs> yes. Those. Those are so. Those great. are great. It's like roll credits. <laughs> Anakin Duck. No. Yeah. Help me, Obi Wan Kenobi. You're my only hope. No. No. <laughs> <laughs> My favorite one is those shooting stars memes. The, the one, one, the shooting stars memes, where it's like, um, <laughs> she Palpatine is like lunging towards the Jedi Masters, and then he like goes into like the into like the galaxy, <laughs> and it's the song that's like, the Star Wars memes are on point. They so are. strong. That's one thing that the Force Awakens did. It like ripped. So many memes were surfaced. I'm gonna shout out Aaron Wells right here again. Oh god! But classic. we were at we were at a wedding two weeks ago, and we were okay. talk, of course we were talking about Star Wars because what else do you talk to me about? Mm-hmm. And he was like, I can't remember where he heard us from, but he like someone one of his friends came up to him and just went like, "It's time for the Jedi to end the First Order." <laughs> That would be so lame if that happened. That would be so lame. I would be like, freaking Disney marketing, I'm going to kill you. It's time to, for the Jedi to end the First Order. <laughs> Funny stuff, man. Funny stuff, dude. Okay, well, that's all we had for uh, this podcast episode. Yeah, a little shorter one. A little shorter one. We have a lot of ideas, a lot of more things we're going to talk about. You know, if you have any suggestions, Definitely. just like put stuff in comments, you know, tell us how we're doing, tell us if you hate us, I'm okay, because joke's on you, I hated myself first. Oh! oh! I don't hate myself, I love myself. Anyways. I hate sand. <laughs> it's just, it gets misplaced. And it's just, it just gets everywhere, and it's coarse. It's just and rough, and I don't, I just goodness. love the fact that. Someone asked that celebration hating Christensen, how do you feel about sand? And he's just like, I don't like it. <laughs> he's like, I don't like it. It just it gets him as placed. It's just it's just a weird thing. It just gets it gets everywhere. <laughs> Gosh, she was being such a good sport during celebration. I really appreciate that. And it's it's good. And I'm glad that some people are moving over oh, moving um moving on with the whole prequel hate and moving on on hating like actually hating the people a part of the prequels because like I said before, nobody goes out to make a Bad yeah. movie, you know? And again, Mark Hamill said this about uh, Jake Lloyd, about his performance. He was just doing what George Lucas asked him to do. Exactly. And that was, he was, he was I paid. I feel sorry for that yeah. kid, because I feel like it ruined his childhood. It did. Like, like, he's, like, not in a good place with everything. And, like, you know, I hope, I hope he gets better. And yeah. it's just sad. Like, I feel like people just really aren't that nice to the guy. Yeah. But anyways, yeah. Um, so, yeah, this is the end of the podcast. Oh, yes. Um... <laughs> I love how we just like her. This is the end of the podcast. Just kidding. <laughs> so, no, for real, this is the end of the podcast. Um, make sure to go like us on Facebook. Exactly. Subscribe to the channel. Leave us a comment. Give us a thumbs up. Um, and, yeah, hopefully see you guys. Or, I guess we don't see you guys. You yeah, guys you don't see us. us. But hopefully, hopefully you listen. Hopefully, yeah. Hopefully you listen. Tune in next week or next time this pops up. Midichlorian Media. Out. out.